If you like what I do, then please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can find all sorts of fun stuff. Link in the description. Way back in the earlier days of the internet, when people were still documenting all the games, official and unofficial, that were released for the Mega Drive on sites like Eidolon Zin and what have you, one term that you'd often see bandied around was Yaseg. Now the Mega Drive had a lot of Yasegs. You could barely move for these incredibly cheap titles, often regarded as the landfill of the retro game collecting world. And now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering just what a Yaseg even is, so I'll put you out of your misery. It stands for Yet Another Celebrity Endorsed Game. Simple, innit? Anywho, Yasegs were pretty common in the old days when you'd find loads more sports games that were licensed by one particular star, as opposed to a league or what have you. In most cases, said star will be the only real person in the game, while the rest will be wholly fake. How interesting are they? Um, depends. Sometimes they're intriguing because you wonder how on earth certain people actually manage to get a game named after them. Sometimes they're intriguing because the game ends up being, um, kind of odd. And sometimes they're actually, you know, good. Today's game is intriguing because of how big the name on the front is. Why, it's probably the most famous sports personality of the 20th century. Surely to God, you would think that would want pushing the boat out somewhat. It is Muhammad Ali's heavyweight boxing. So this is hardly some tin can bum, it's a guy who transcended his sport, the most charismatic man on the face of the earth. We last saw him in North Korea circa 1995, trading jokes with wrestlers, calling the government motherfuckers and jogging upstairs like it was nothing, belying the perception people had of him being frail due to his Parkinson's. He was still 100% Ali, just a lot quieter. This is the first game, I believe, to feature Ali officially. Released by Virgin and made by Park Place Productions in 1992, it came out for the Mega Drive and the Game Boy. A prototype also exists for a SNES version, but it never got released. But what an awesome name to snatch, eh? A chance to celebrate the legacy of one of the most celebrated, iconic people ever to walk the face of the earth. Alas, what you end up getting is a pitch-perfect example of how generic and boilerplate Yasegs can be. That said, the game is not wholly without merit. The game allows you to choose between Muhammad Ali and nine other boxers who aren't named Muhammad Ali. You can recreate such titanic tussles as Ali vs. Um, Bruno Franco, or Carlos Espinosa, or any of the other completely fictional fighters. I guess that's the disappointing bit really. It's a shame that the game didn't get any other real fighters who Ali fought against. This was pretty common of course, most boxing titles were like this, whether it's Evander Holyfield's Real Deal Boxing, James Buster Douglas Knockout Boxing, George Foreman's KO Boxing, or indeed Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. The main mode is a tournament where you have to advance through the ranks and win the championship. It's kind of a shame that the game doesn't feel specifically like an Ali game, and instead kind of feels like it could have had any other big boxer on the front of it. However, as for the actual game, it's decent. While the sprites are 2D, the ring is 3D, and the result is perhaps the most advanced boxing game that had appeared on a console to date. Now obviously the PC had the almighty and way ahead of its time 4D sports boxing from the previous year, but Muhammad Ali's game is surprisingly deep. You get two modes of control, arcade or simulation. Simulation, which is definitely the preferred method, assigns the A and C buttons to your left and right arms, while B defends. You hold down the buttons and then use the directions to perform jabs, hooks, bobs and weaves. It takes a short while to get used to, but the end result is actually quite technical and fast paced. It's pretty easy to string combos together, and the defence is such that you can't just hold the block button and go into a shell. There's actually a whole load of different styles emulated too, which makes the other fighters actually feel unique even if they aren't Muhammad Ali. Also, the game is all about speed and power, the two metres that replace the traditional energy bar. Obviously they go down if you get hit, but they also go down if you miss too many big punches, so spamming uppercuts just isn't recommended. Successful hits replenish the metre, as does performing defensive moves, you should do that often. 
A depleted meter greatly increases the chance to get knocked down, and you can't just hammer the buttons to get up if you do. You kind of have to rock the d-pad up and down instead. There's also some nice crunchy sound effects for the punchers, and it is a fun game to play. There's a lot of swins and roundabouts in a good fight, and while you really feel like you're riding high when you get a good string of hits on the opponent, it's not as if they can't bounce back if they get good shots in and start making you miss. So compared to the other boxing games on the 16 bits, it definitely stands out. It's way better than the more arcadey likes of the Evander Holyfield and Greatest Heavyweights games, and certainly miles ahead of the rather lame Buster Douglas and George Foreman titles. Legends of the Rin was another game that tried to do a simulation of boxing, and that also works quite well while also looking considerably nicer it has to be said. If like me you don't really consider Punch-Out to be a simulation of boxing and more an arcade game based on good timing, then these two are probably duking it out for the title on consoles. It's just a shame that the presentation on this is so ugly and the game doesn't really use Ali all that well, but then that was the standard of the time, and the boxing on its own is, yeah, it's pretty good. This is the sort of game where a sequel would have potentially really delivered, but alas Park Place Productions folded the next year and this game is kind of obscure nowadays. Muhammad Ali would still have something of a further impact on boxing games though, thanks to an even more obscure boxing game on the 3DO. Foes of Ali, released by EA Sports in 1995, arguably the first full 3D boxing game to appear on a console. This one does what you would hope Ali heavyweight boxing would have done. It matches the greatest against several other famed opponents from his career, Sonny Liston, Joe Frazier, Ken Norton and various others although notably not George Foreman who was still fighting, are present. The game wasn't exactly a success being on the 3DO and all, but the sequel would end up on the PS1, Knockout Kings from 1998. And so Foes of Ali was the first entry in the series that would eventually become the almighty Fight Night. It grew from a somewhat middling 3DO title to become the greatest boxing sim ever made, with all kinds of accolades to its name. The original Knockout Kings has the best illegal low blows in the history of boxing games, helped along by Mills Lane chewing you out and most certainly not allowing it. Fight Night Round 3 holds the title of Most Blatant Sponsorship Hawking in the History of Video Games. Just look at this. Now to be fair, this is a lot better than Sneak Kin. And then there's Fight Night Round 4, which well, no reason to joke around, is damn near perfect in every way and was one of my favourite games of the last generation. Boxing games don't get better than this one right here, a true classic. Annoyingly, with boxing being what it is today, old games are kind of all we have at the moment. Fight Night hasn't had a new game for six years, with the excellent Fight Night champion still standing as the last entry in the series, as well as arguably being the trailblazer for EA's current obsession with putting those big the Journey story modes in their major sports titles. While those games are excellent and there's certainly demand for a new boxing game, the team behind Fight Night are unfortunately stuck working on those god-awful UFC games and rumour has it that EA don't think it's worth going around and licensing lots of individual boxers for another Fight Night. Hopefully we do see another Fight Night at some point and folks like me who love a good boxing game will actually have something new to screw around with. For now, though, there's always the oldies and Muhammad Ali Heavyweight Boxing does have some definite strengths that make it an easy slugger to get into, but not one that sacrifices depth for it. It may not be a champion, but it's certainly a contender. Bye for now! For this video, I would like to thank the following. Adam Schaefer, Alex Stoko, Andrew Dalton, Andy Capt, Audi Sawley, Conformist, Daniel David Taylor, Dustin Cooper, Gary Pinkett, George Newton, Ghostly Spectre, Grayfin Blackpaw, Hunter, Ian Roberts, James Id, James Loveridge, Jason Derso, Jason Goy, Jason Leach, Jason Stevens, Johan Eriksson, Josh Jensen, Lee Norris, Mark Johnston, Martin Pataki, Nanette McCrone, Nicholas Tristan, Olaf Albin, Pete Morris, Peter Jack, Peter Sidon, Phil Taprog, Pocky Southmaid, Rachel Maxwell, Romeo, Ryan Burford, Ryan Wyatt Coleman, Sammy Lee, Sean Zoltek, Seth Robinson, Simon Gulliver, Stephen Warner, The Unnatural, Tiago Pereira dos Santos Silva, Tanyo Jay, Twisted Scrote, Vishardi, Yurka Operator, and Zach Roach.